Now then, while I was going to, while I worked, you know, to uh, tell you a little bit about engines, but, uh, you know, as anyone who videos knows, it takes four times longer and I've just had to get on a bit. So we've got the cover back on. That's the main thing. We've got everything back together, except I've not tightened that nut up yet. The reason you'll see in a moment. Um, so we've got the old girl back together, more or less. And mounted again. Found one or two issues, as you do with old engines, but nothing we can do about that. Anyway, while the rocker cover's off, I did a video a while ago to show you how to find the firing order. And also, I can show you how to check if the timing is nearly correct. Now, it may be a little bit out. Uh, you always want to turn an engine over by hand, especially diesels, to make sure the valves don't hit. So, I can show you. Basically, I can show you how the uh, to check the timing. And we've got a timing mark on the pulley. So we know when top dead center is, but we find that I'll show you in a moment. But so first of all, I'll just set the camera up on here, um, and I think you'll be able to see the rockers. I'll put light on it. So I'll just show you first of all how to a bit better than the other video. I did a video. Uh, excuse me, I've just clambering about. Yes, you can see them there. If I set the camera up here and put the light there, I think you should be able to see them. It's fairly light in here, isn't it? Not too bad today. So, um, first of all, I've got to wind it over. And all you have to do to find the firing order is watch which inlet valve, well, or, or exhaust, but I work on the inlets, goes down first. There we are. You can see them there, and I will point to them. So first of all, starting with number one. Now on this engine, when the timing chain marks were on, it was actually timed up on number four. So maybe, just maybe, on this engine, that is number one. But normally number one's the front. So to avoid confusion, we'll call this number one. Now, that's the inlet valve. I think I pointed this out to you before. So what you do is wind it round, which is going to be quite difficult, until that valve opens. Now, we have to go around quite a way. Ooh, it's hard. And I've caught my finger on the bolt, never mind. And, uh, when you see number one inlet valve open, you keep going round until you see the next valve inlet valve open. Right, there's the exhaust going down. That's the exhaust there. I know you're a little bit far away, but this is still the best way to do it. And the exhaust coming up, and so next, of course, will be the inlet, you know that. This is just to show you how to find the firing order in case you're stuck. So there we are. I'll just move the light a bit so I hope you can see. There's number one inlet valve opening. Now because I know the firing order of this engine, we know the next one to go down will be number three. And if you look there, number three exhaust valve is open. And so, as we know, the next valve to open is, of course, the inlet valve. So, we carry on winding, and with three injectors in, this is quite a tough job. That tough. There we are, look. You can probably see number three inlet valve opening, right? Now, the next one, of course, watch the inlet valves and watch for the next one opening, but the exhaust valves open, so you know very well that the next one will be number four for the inlet valve. There's the exhaust come up, and there's 
number four in that valve going down, which of course leaves number two, which is this one. So the exhaust open on number two, and we keep going a bit more. Oh, I keep catching my hand on the bracket in my thumb. And uh, sure enough, sure enough, number two is opening. So that's how you find the firing order if you don't know what it is on any conventional engine. You know, don't like the number of just just what's in that valves. Now the next thing I want to show you is just to see if the camshaft is somewhere near timed. Now as you saw, the exhaust follows, sorry, the inlet valve follows the exhaust and it's what you call rocking. Now this camshaft hardly has any valve overlap because they're both shut at more or less the same time. But on most car engines especially, except with variable valve time expect, etc. on the modern ones, what you do is, this has got the injector out, so we put a probe, which in this case is a small screwdriver in there, and winding over again, I'll put the light there, I think you'll be able to see. So if I carry on winding over, because I know it's nearly there, I need to find top dead centre, Hang on, this is, we've got a tough bit, there we go, we've got a good compression, there we are, now, put your probe in there, and in a moment, you should feel the piston come to the top, and you can, you can't see from that distance unfortunately, but that screwdriver is now coming up, there we are, and by rocking it slightly, which you can even do on the pulley now, you should see, in fact I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll move you slightly closer, if I can, just so you can see that screwdriver, oh, um, we're going to have to move the light, and put that here probably, and I think then, you should be able to see it. Let me just go and check the camera. Just get walk around, check the camera. And there's the screwdriver, yes. You can see it when the light's on it. So we're going to have to leave the light on it. Just there, it won't matter now. Right. So, we rock the engine slightly, and you can see that screwdriver move up and down, see? So that's top dead centre. Now at the same time, as that's at the top, <coughs> you can see these two valves are what you call rocking, and the inlet valve is actually a fraction before. We've checked the timing, so we know it's right. So the inlet valve is just opening, and on this engine, it is slightly before. You see? <sighs> That's the exhaust valve just moving. So the exhaust valve shorts there, and it gets to top dead center, and the inlet valve closes. So, there is no actual overlap on the camshaft on this tractor, right, on this engine. So I hope you found that a little bit interesting. Um, like I said, I was certainly intending to tell you all this while I was uh, sort of doing a little bit, but it was just too much, you know, I've had a quite a hectic job to get that on. It didn't quite want to go on. It's very, very tight, so we've had a little struggle but it's on and it's all present and correct as far as I can tell. Mark helped me take it off last night. Anyway, an engine 
is simply a heat converter. Right? It converts heat to mechanical energy. And brakes, of course, which on this tractor are inboard drum brakes there. I did a video on them last year. They're a heat converter as well. But the opposite of an engine. Because an engine, of course, burns fuel, which forces the pistons down. Now, most of you will know this, so it's just for one or two that may not. It forces the piston down in a vertical or linear motion, and the crankshaft, which is connected to the piston, by the connecting rods, obviously, and I've got um, engines in bits that will show you that, and there's hundreds of videos that will show you. It converts linear up and down motion to rotary motion, and that's how they work. I mean, it, it really is... This, this is not, by the way, my opinion. This is the laws of the universe, you know. <laughs> so, just in case you're wondering. So, that's how that works. And, of course, brakes, they create heat by friction, and that's how they stop the car. So, in other words, they convert mechanical energy to heat and stop the car or vehicle or tractor or lorry or whatever you want. Whereas, an engine converts heat to mechanical energy to make it move. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that little sideline of the engine and you may just have found it a tiny bit interesting. So, we still haven't got to the root of the problem, unfortunately. But uh, the timing mark on this pulley is vertical. You can maybe just see it underneath there. There is actually a, a black timing mark on it. And if you remember, that's where the key is. And uh, that's where it was when it was timed up. So it's certainly, you know, you could have checked this without actually taking the cover off. But we've taken the cover off and you've seen... You know, we've checked it, double checked it now. So, there we are. Right. Hope you found it, as I say, tiny bit interesting. And we'll certainly let you know what the problem is. Uh, but, although I'm, I did engines, and I know a lot about engines. I built engines for four years in the 20s, I told you before. And uh, we're not scared of engines and that. Unfortunately, I'm no diesel mechanic. I know how injection pumps work and how the injectors work and I've got the rudiments but um, as I say I'm not a diesel fitter so we're going to have to wait for information on this and find out you know what the problem is it could be it could be anything could be anything it may just be we've got an air leak on the fuel system because you can see there's several might not just have run it long enough to purge it for air. But there we are. Right. We will uh, try and find something for you a bit later. Thanks a lot. Have fun.